Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Investing and Trading Live. My name is Josh Lopez. Today is Wednesday, September 6th, second trading day of the week. Yes, it is the second trading day of the week. Markets were closed on Monday due to Labor Day, and markets opened yesterday. And we have a, we got a lot of a lot of fireworks in the market here today. We're going to discuss some of the fireworks that are happening. One, two, three, currently four negative days in a row, especially with the S&P 500. Also, a couple of other things. We have DocuSign reporting earnings tomorrow, and that volatility is, is increasing, uh, which is giving some premium, but don't be too, too fast on, on that with the earnings report coming up here tomorrow. So we will discuss that. We'll do a quick market update. Then I'll bring Luke Young on the show here today. He'll be talking about some different stocks, and we will get into our hot takes for the day, including the one and the only UPS that we had talked about about three weeks ago and we'll check that stock and see where that's at in conjunction to what his thought was and what my thought was on the market so don't uh don't don't get off the show until then make sure to check out that hot take toward the end of the show here today but as we know there is risk in trading investing there you can lose will lose money at one point in your life this is for entertainment purposes only mainly mine but hopefully hopefully you find it entertaining as well so a quick update on the s p 500 the spy is currently at 445 31 down about 0.87 percent on the day so a big a gap down and we're continuing to see that downward pressure here it's currently 11 20 here central time yes i am now in central time i've been in uh, three time zones over the last week here so seeing some different times here but 11 20 central time the dow jones currently down 0.67 percent of the day currently at 344.65 and the q's which is the nasdaq currently at 373.71 down about 1.15% on the day. I believe Apple is leading the charge of the, the downward spiral of the Qs. Actually, yesterday, the QQQ ETF had a positive day, which is a little bit different than what the Dow Jones and the S&P 500 showed yesterday. IWM currently at 185.57, down about 0.67% of the day. Same story. And we are at the lows for all those markets here today. Real quick, gold and silver. Gold spot price currently is not the safe haven. You know, they they talk about gold and silver being the safe haven. It's doing the same thing as the market is doing. Currently down 4.42% on the day at $1,917.50. And silver currently at $23.14, down 1.7% on the day. There might be some opportunities with gold and silver here. We'll check that out on the on the other platform before we get to the end of the show. That being said, I do have uh, Luke Young on the show here today. And Luke, how are you doing today? I'm good as always, Josh. Hey, it's good. How was your weekend? It was good. We, uh, me and Josh were in North Carolina. My sister just got married. It was a very fun time. Yeah, it was a great time. Night, beautiful wedding, by the way. Yeah, we tore it up on the dance floor. <laughs> My feet are still sore. Um, you know, we could talk about that weekend here for a while, but you know, this is a stock market show. We will talk about the stock market and keep that, uh, keep that for maybe a, a different show for those people, those people that might want to know. But there's a few things I want to discuss here today. So the S and P's, especially the NASDAQ is showing, showing a lot of, a lot of bearish pressure in the market. And, uh, Apple was leading the charge according to, I believe it was market watch, uh, when I saw that pop through, down about 3.27% on the day. Now, looking at Apple, they've been in a, a major uptrend really on the whole year. It was up about 60% on the year, dropped right around 10%, and now currently it's up at about 40, 48% roughly on the year. Now, is this just a pullback with Apple? Or are things kind of starting to show a little bit of a downtrend with Apple? What's your what's your take on that? I like you just brought this up because I was looking at Apple this morning when I was going through my um, market scans. I see, am I still believe Apple's in an uptrend at least in the the four hour charts, and I think this might be a pullback down to the one eighty sixty three range. That's that's kind of my take on it. I'm going to probably take a shot going long. I, I think I mentioned a few weeks ago how many times I've tried going long on Apple in the past 
you know, X amount of months and I haven't been able to. So maybe hopefully this is my first opportunity. I like it. Yeah. And that's, that's a cool thing because, you know, you talked about different time frames on a price chart. So it's not, oh, you like Apple iPhones or you like the Apple eye shoe or the eye headband or whatever that may be. It's you're, you're basing your analysis off a price chart and it's using multiple, multi, multi, uh, time time zone or time frame analysis, which is pretty cool. I'm glad you brought that up. And I, I, I do kind of like that. I mean, Apple, I, I think, is a great company. That's my opinion on that. Um, you know, did see a pretty big pullback showing off of that four-hour chart, but over the past, we'll say, 20 days or so, other than today, it, it's been retracing back. And it did almost fill that gap from back on August 4th. So... You know, is this a, a new trend going up? Are you looking at that more so on options probably? Yeah, options are stock. I haven't really looked into it just yet because price isn't near my zone. I don't really come up with that strategy uh, right before I enter. Got it. Okay. Yeah, I, I personally like it down a little further. Um, I do like the zone down by the 140, 150 area uh, where it did kind of see a, a a, a little um, a little a lot little buying pressure there but that's pretty far down there who knows if it actually will get down there that's gosh quite frankly another 20 percent drop which could take quite some time so which which is nice because that's on a larger time frame what you're looking at is a shorter time frame which means it'll be closer to price in theory so i like that okay so a couple other notables here today i mentioned at the beginning of the show was DocuSign. Now, DocuSign has been kind of jumping around a little bit over the past, we'll call it probably uh, on the year, actually. It's, it's been jumping around, actually, right around the same price it was at the beginning of the year. Now, we're seeing some increase in price the past five, six days. I don't know if you can see my chart here. But the volatility has also increased. Now... A lot of people are probably looking at DocuSign and saying, oh, DocuSign is looking really good right now. Is it a buy or a sell? Well, for those people that may not know, they actually have earnings coming up tomorrow. So with earnings coming up there, is is it smart to kind of wait and see what earnings does or, or just get, in a, get in an, into DocuSign and hope it goes up? The buy and hope strategy? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. That that can hurt you really bad on earnings. Earnings is normally a big uh, movement in the markets. I mean, price could jump, you know, 5%, 10%, depending on how good or bad their earnings are. Why would you take that gamble? You can go to the casino and gamble if you want to gamble. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if you want to play earnings, there's ways to do it. But uh, definitely not just the buy and hope strategy. Yeah. Well, you know, one thing with with DocuSign is with the volatility increasing, there there are options, opportunities. There there is some two day options that uh, that give some pretty good premium. It would it would need to drop twelve percent to actually get down to that to uh, one of the options ten ten to twelve percent. Now that seems like a big drop, but with earnings, that definitely could happen. So it's not really worth the risk, as as what you were kind of talking about. That way, it doesn't. You don't want to gamble in the financial markets. You want to have strategic entries and strategic exits, and make smart investing decisions rather than just hoping things work out. So another notable here is WWE. Now, I've been talking about this on the show for the past year, year and a half, and really, it's been showing major growth uh, since the lows of. Mm, December of this past year, uh, it showed some growth of about 143%. Now, we've seen some big drops in the market, and, and partially because the Saudi Arabia deal that's been happening, it, 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 uh, um, there was a $100 million investment in a UFC competitor. So that's been showing some big bearish pressure with WWE, but is this just a buying opportunity? It, it's it's a possibility, right? You know, w, is WWE a strong company? I mean, I don't know. They're, they're, they've been kind of rocky with the sale and Saudi Arabia and all these different things. What is your take on WWE? Do you have any insight on this price chart that I have up right here? With This is a daily price chart, and it's shooting straight up, and we've seen a retracement 
from last week down about almost 20%. It was down 20 to down, currently at 17% of a drop. Is this buying WWE at a discount, or is news, could this could this change that trend? If um, an uptrend is broken, obviously, I, I can't really see the chart. I'm not looking at it, but if an uptrend is broken in any segment, it normally will indicate a sideways to a, a new trend-making zone, which would be a downtrend. And Josh just pulled up the chart. It, it's been in a daily uptrend since, I don't know, what is that? 2022. Year? Yeah, a whole year. And it looks like a swing low of an uptrend was broken. So now you're kind of in this sideways to down-looking market. So this is something you can look at maybe going short on you know, soon and, and uh, bring price down to a, a place where you're willing to buy way lower. Got it. So, yeah, technically it, it, it has. I mean, we could put some trend lines on here, but they're – you know that's just you know how you know something like that where they it could have room to grow now trend lines aren't a place to or an indicator to be buying or selling because obviously they're going to be lagging but it could give you an, an insight on what price has been doing so as luke is talking about there could be some more downward pressure here and then being able to potentially buy near that trend line but you want to be doing that either at, you know, obviously buying at a, at a demand zone rather than just buying for no particular reason. So I like that analysis there. How about the um, upstart? We talked about that last we time. We did. I talked about that yesterday as well. So that was, that was yesterday. It was still in that, in that zone, and it was starting to come out of that zone. Now we're back about in the middle of that zone. Um, that was about, was it last the 28th, I believe we were talking about that. Mm -hmm. You were talking about some options on that. Are you still liking that long? Yeah, I think this is still a stock it has large upside. I actually, I took a uh, a smaller zone in a smaller time frame, so I, you know, I'm already in the money and I have my my stop at break even. So this is kind of something you can just keep into the market. Earnings isn't coming up for another two months. Not just until November away. 23. Yeah. Just walk away and. You know, you got your, your strategy put in place. I like that because, you know, we talked about that zone, on, especially on a daily chart, and it is current, <coughs> currently still in there. So with the volatility and the sideways action, what Luke is talking about is that once you have your strategy, you have your entry points and your targets and everything, there's no need to just get out for no particular reason. It's all set up in advance, so that way you let the trade or investment work for you. You're not working for it. Um, so that's your upstart analysis. Obviously, we've had a lot of a lot of struggle busts with Dick Sporting Goods, Nike, um, even Macy's over the past few weeks here, and uh, especially with Dick Sporting Goods, there you know the earnings came out and it, it was it was a lackluster earnings report for them, and dropped about. 28% from the highs, and that's currently where it's at right now. Now, are these buying opportunities for some of these companies, or do you think the retail sector, the retail industry, is going to see a decline here with all the theft and you know things that are going on and, and technology and, and apps you know taking over with people purchasing? You know, I think the retail sector has 100% broken its uptrend. So right now... You know, it's not on this blazing uptrend that it's been on in the past, you know, X amount of months. Um, so this is something you can look at either waiting to go long at or, you know, possibly taking advantage to the downside uh, in the near future. But, I mean, you see these stocks when they gap down 20%, that's a pretty big deal. You know, people aren't just going to buy when it's minus 20 percent and hope for it to come up because you know it could drop another 20 40 percent mm -hmm. and then the buy and hope strategy is kicking you out just as it has always has Yep, yeah. it's kind of like catching a falling knife yeah right i mean if the market what's in it's what's the law the law of motion or what is that the law the law of uh what's in motion will stay in motion 
Is that Newton's <laughs> law? Yeah, Newton's or law. I what forget is what science class. The, you know, we gotta have a little bit of extra extracurricular activities in this. And this, if, if science is it, it's Newton's law of an object motion. in motion stays in motion. Yeah, and that's kind of what if if a market is is dropping and you it's just continuing to drop. You don't want to just try to catch that. Um, you know, there there might be a larger time frame to do that in, but especially in a smaller time frame, you're just trying to catch a, a falling knife and. And that's a, it can be a risky strategy. But that being said, where you get your lowest risk, highest reward, and highest probability entry points is at or near a turn in price. So base your decisions off the right time frame. And if you're, you know, say what you're talking about, being in the right trend, taking this short might be an opportunity if you think that knife will keep falling. How about talking about a knife? If you go to the actual S&P, which is Basically, the main market. Yep. Here's it, the S and P 500 uh, the ETF. I mean, we talked about it being down. It's actually down almost one percent now after the last twenty minutes or so. So if you go to a one hour chart, okay. And you want to talk about a falling knife? So it's it's falling pretty pretty fast, pretty quick, which is what the market does normally on the downside. But you do have a slight demand zone where price is approaching looks like maybe another one percent down so that'll be interesting to see is that demand zone going to hold up or is price going to be too strong falling knife you through this zone to continue to the downside around yeah, 440 yeah. to 443 yeah, that, that exact area yep. so, so that's pretty much a key point in the s p right now i know it's on, only on a one hour time frame but if price breaks that where is it going to go that's the main question. Yeah, you know, I do like that because it does break a pivot high. You know, it, it the trend downtrend stopped, made a high, made a higher low, created that demand zone at that 440 443 area and broke that high. And I mean, that could be a strong zone there, but if it does not hold, that next stopping point could be that zone on the on the uh on the daily that we've been talking about for several weeks now, the 425 to 430. Which the daily zone is far down there, honestly. I mean, that's, what, a 5 6% drop at least? 3.3% drop from current price. From current price. So to break that, though, it would be almost 4.5%. So which, which it could happen in four days. Is that likely? Probably not, but there might be opportunities within there on smaller time frames as well. What is uh, year-to-date, what is the S&P up? Year-to-date, S&P, I just, I just did that analysis yesterday. But let me just pull it up again. If you want to look at the archives from yesterday, it's on yesterday's show. But year-to-date, S&P 500, and we will go to the, I'm just going to go do the overall index, is up 15.54%. Okay. So it is it is up on on the year. Um, a few weeks ago, wasn't it twenty five? Probably closer to probably closer to twenty. Okay. Yep. No, the Nasdaq is currently up thirty eight percent. The Dow Jones was only up three percent. So the Dow Jones is kind of the 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 black sheep of the of the crew. It's 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 way behind. A lot of these losses that we're seeing in the market the last five six seven days is you have the dollar just continuing to to get stronger year to date the dollar is only up one percent on the year but over the past seven days seven green days in a row and green day no pun intended with the band but i hope you had the time of your life (laughs) um currently broke that high from June. Now, if we see this dollar continue this uptrend, getting past the 105 mark, now that could see a lot of weakness coming into into the stock market. So yeah, people too, um, when they're investing in the markets, obviously they look at sectors, but a lot of people look at the U.S. dollar, and a lot of people look at what's called the VIX, which is basically a, a gauge or a, a a stock price which indicates fear versus greed in the market. So Currently a lot of people at fourteen sixty two. So so it's kind of saying greed 
um, versus fear. So anything high on the VIX means uh, fear is very high and anything low on the VIX means greed is very high, which typically results in the market going up and down, obviously with fear and greed. So this is where you can also chart supply and demand because the VIX bounces off of that constantly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, going back to the U.S. dollar, um, I checked the archives, but a couple of weeks ago, I said I, I I see this this market going to at least one hundred five. One hundred five is a is one of the the daily dimes that I talk about uh, in the currency market. It's a, it's a whole number, and it's an it's an important number. And we're nearing we're approaching that one hundred five mark with the U.S. dollar. I think we talked about that back when it was at one hundred two fifty. Yeah, once it once it broke that one hundred two fifty, I was talking about on the show. I, I see this going to one hundred five. If we break that 105, I see that taking it up to 107.50, which would be the next point of uh, of that dollar. Which, if that continues, the stock market, most likely being inversely correlated, will probably continue that decline. Now, do we have a crystal ball? No, this is strictly for entertainment purposes only, but I like my entertainment. How about you? I like it. I love it. <laughs> All right, let's do our hot takes. So we had a couple... Hot takes that I wanted to to go through, and the last one we're going to do is UPS, since we talked about that almost a month ago now. Now, do you remember your take on UPS? You thought you said it was bad for the stock with the increase in, in salaries and everything? My opinion was very bearish. Very bearish. Okay. So we will go back to that. I don't know if you looked at that recently. Oh, but I'm gonna I throw... keep close close eye on my, my opinion. <laughs> You've been waiting to uh, to bring this back to me, didn't you? Oh yeah. So let's do a couple stocks. I want you to give me a, a yay or a nay. If you if you if you think if you're a buyer or are you a seller, yay for buyer, nay for seller. I'm can give they you a, uh, can they see the? No, this is a okay. podcast. Podcast is strictly audio. We're not doing the YouTube stream here today. For those of you that do want to check the uh, the YouTube archives, just just type in Josh Lilquist, and we got hundreds and hundreds of videos from the shows in the past that we record on on audio and video so but this one's on audio all right salesforce currently at 219.98 yay or nay is there a wait button is there a, a what like i could say yay nay or wait you know wait until something solidifies in an up or down trend um okay there's a there's a there's a wait wait and see button let's call it that all right wait and see all right disney Woo. Nay. Nay. Goldman Sachs. Oh. I'm kind of thinking yay. I do like that as well. I like the yay, but it is wait and see because it's been so volatile, just chopping around. Might be some opportunity with some options, selling mm-hmm. some puts and just collecting premium. That's the perfect strategy. Um, you know, it was low on the percent Bollinger Band a couple weeks ago, but most likely volatility is low on these bank stocks. Netflix. Woo! Yay! Yay! Coinbase. Mm. Is a bargain still currently at seventy seven bucks. Potentially yay, but you need it to to fall a little bit on that chart. All right, Nike. Ooh. Nay. Nay, and last but not oh, we got one more that we got. I want to get into Target. We are out of that zone that we've been talking about. Again, it's been sitting from the three one 137 down to 124 market. We did break that, came back in there. Now we're currently lower than that again. I do like that demand zone at 110. What's your thoughts? Uh, short-term nay. Short-term nay with a longer-term yay if it gets down? Possibly for sure. There we go. And rounding out the hot take of the day, UPS. Nay. Nay. Still going down. As my good friends Jason Derulo once said, I am, are you going down, 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 down? Boy, that good singing, it might get a copyright infringement and make it this, this podcast deleted. So hopefully you're listening live. So I do like that as a nay as well. I might be changing my thoughts, but we are coming down to a pivotal area are on the 155 mark, which might see some buying pressure from the retail public. We'll see if that actually moves the price. Probably not, but you're a nay. You're, you're sticking with your guns there, huh? Oh, yeah. Got it. Well, that, folks, is your hot takes of the day. 
We will do this again probably next week. Tomorrow we're going to do four segments on the show. Make sure to check out that live. That will most likely be between 8 and 10 a.m. Central Time. Al and I will be doing four segments there. We will also run that live on YouTube, so make sure to subscribe to the podcast, wherever you listen to podcasts, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube. Smash that like button or subscribe button on, uh, just go to Josh Lilquist on YouTube. And as always, collect your profits when they're given to you and protect your losses when they are small. Until next time, retire young, my friends.